Good evening. This is the subcommittee of the Security Safety Transportation Meeting, February 2nd, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. We have two items on the agenda. Item one is purchase of buses, buses and vans, and two is other business. Before I start, I have to read a statement. Almost forgot, Mike. <clears throat> Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor ba Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from open meeting law requirements that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as other measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate and alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 9. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton Channels. We move right to item one. Mike, do you want to frame that? Sure. So um, obviously we've been um, talking about um, purchasing our own buses and vans. Um, Aldo and Dr. Cobb have spent a lot of time researching this, um, going through numbers, um, working with um, the mayor's office. Um, and again, they've spent a ton of time, as you know, the, um, the cost of, of the outside contracted companies, uh, the cost of buses and, and vans continue to, continues to rise and it has over the last several years. And I believe um, me, um, Joyce, and it was it last, it was last fall, me, Joyce, and uh, Mr. Sullivan, you might have been with us too, and Mr. D'Agostino were at the um, this, the Mass Association of School Committees and um, Superintendents Joint Conference down in, um, down in uh, Hyannis, and we had a company, we went to a presentation um, about bringing bus services into, you know, in-house, and then we had that, um, that group come in and do the group that did the presentation came in and did an evaluation um, of our busing. Um, they did an evaluation of how much we pay. Uh, they made a strong recommendation that we start to bring transportation in house. And we've obviously had this, we've had this conversation, um, you know, several times. And, um, you know, I want to appreciate the help from the mayor's office. But again, I'll let uh, Dr. Cobbs and Aldo take it from here because they've spent a ton of time on this. And um, the mayor can jump in as well because he's he's had several meetings about this. So Al, do you want to tee it up? Sure. Well, I teed it up. You want to hit it from there? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hit it out of the park, Al. So as we said, we've been working on this for quite a while. Um, we did an analysis on the number of buses, what we paid. The the costs have been going up six percent or more every year on average for the past ten years. Um, buses went from about $49,000 a year to about $84,000 a year. So that would print us to see what it would take for us to have our own bus fleet. Um, we've um, been talking, we've been working with a state co um, state contractor, someone that's on state contract, so we don't have to do the whole procurement piece. Um, there aren't that many bus manufacturers out there anyways, and these guys have a great reputation. So they've, they've met with Dr. Cobbs and I um, at least half a dozen times. We've gone through the different types of buses, the ones that have the lifts for the wheelchairs, the ones that have the special receipts, the, the special seat belts for the infants, um, you know, all the different styles. You can have seats that are removable, um, you know, the length of the bus, um, how many they carry. Dr. Cobbs made a suggestion that we increase the gas tank size so that we're not filling the buses every other day. We could fill them hopefully once a week and not have to go to the gas depot so often or if we had a service that came and filled up our trucks, same thing, they wouldn't have to come in so often and, and fill them. So um, I've got a, a PowerPoint that I can go through pretty quickly if I can share my screen, um, just so you can see what we're talking about on these buses. Let's see how I bring it up here, I think. 
So um, the company is called um, Anderson, and they build what they call Bluebird buses. Um, most many of what you see around around the state. Um, let's just go through it kind of quick. The overview is going to show you the bus. We're not going to go through the warranty and stuff. It's got your standard warranties. Uh, we'll go through the camera systems. We uh, Again, we requested everything that's in it, the camera systems, the two-way radios, um, all the special items that go on the buses, those items that we requested that would make our life um, uh, better for being in the service. So the larger buses are known as the 71 passenger bus, the type C buses, the ones you, you know see going around. Um, they, they meet all the safety requirements. Everything has to pass inspections um, by the state, by the, 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 the DOT. Um, we've asked them to be outfitted with two-way radios, with, um, well, backup cameras, you know, the, the arm that comes out that stops the, the uh, traffic from passing. Those arms will have, um, when the arm goes out, the cameras will activate, we'll record any traffic that's going by the bus outside. If someone decides to try and pass a stopped bus, there's three cameras on the inside that record all the activity inside. And they don't just record, they will actually um, go back to a web, um, go back to uh, uh, the internet and we'll have access to actually be able to see any of our buses at any point in time. If there's ever a situation that arises, we've got the ability to go in and see what's happening. And at the same time, it'll record in case there is an incident uh, on the buses. That's something that um, Dr. Cobbs worked on with them that we wanted for for us being in this business, where we now will be liable for our own kids. Um, the smaller bus, there's two of them. There's a 29 passenger, the one you see in the picture there. This is your standard, again, bus that um, you, you, your regular education kids go on. The next bus you'll see has the handicap ramp. But again, it has the heater, it has the radio system. Um, the, the, the seats are removable from all these buses. So we can set up the configuration however we want. So we can fit more kids if we have to um, use them for athletics, we can remove seats for putting hockey equipment or whatnot in the back. Um, again, though, everything's gonna be brand new. So the seats are interchangeable, things will pop out. Uh, gasoline engines, we looked at whether or not we'd go diesel, whether we go gasoline, gasoline works best for us. Uh, the diesel has a longer life in the bus, but as you'll see, we're, we're estimating less than 5,000 miles a year per bus. <clears throat> and buses do well over 100,000 miles. So. These will have a long, long life. So gasoline heats up faster. It's easier for maintenance, less oil changes and whatnot. Um, this picture kind of shows the configuration of how the bus is inside. Let's see the next slide. Again, I'm going fast because I know we have one hour. This is your handicap bus. There's the lift um, that moves the, the, the child in and out. We can fit as many as either four, or I think almost five. Uh, Jim, do you know uh, wheelchairs in there? Yeah, it'll it'll take four wheelchairs, or we can take the wheelchair seats out and uh, configure it with more child seats. So uh, we'll move it around. So if you yeah, have so we bus, it's, it's we can do whichever way we want to do, but four wheelchairs at a time it'll take. So. Um, and then there's also some 35 passenger buses, which again, allows you to bring a few more students. Um, we configured the number of buses that we need for our, our student uh, enrollment. We used um, the data that Peggy Kalea has. She sets up all the routes. She knows all the children. She knows all the stops. So when we get to the actual financial piece, you'll see how we configure the number of buses um, of each category that we want. Um, this is some of the stuff we asked for some of the buses, integrated child seats. As you know, right now, we, we put child seats in and out of the vehicles. This gives us the ability to have them built in. They close up when they're not in use. Um, again, the seats are interchangeable. We can move them out if, if we don't need them, or we can put them in vehicles that do need them. So that'll help quite a bit with the um, with the program we have at the high school with the young mothers. Uh, Mass grad. Mass grad, they can bring their children in uh, to school, strap them in, they can sit next to them. Um, uh, again, a few of these buses will make a big difference for us. Um, this goes in and shows you if you put your own child seat in how there's special straps, special way to um, strap them in so that they're very secure and they meet all, um, rec all requirements of the state. Um, that's warranty information. This is the cost information of what we um, we're determining what we need, 57 of the very large buses, 49 of the 29 passenger, um, 
12 of the 29 passenger were the integrated child seats. And then 24 passenger with the wheelchair. And then the 35 passenger um, have the universal restraints for child seats in them. So we figured 57, 49, 12, seven and two. Total of 127 buses. Um, total of all those buses to buy them all at once is 10,257,000 for your entire fleet. And this allows us extra buses in case we ever have a breakdown or situation where we need to swap out buses. Um, so we've got the ability there to switch off. This is the camera system, which again, I told you was, um, you know, uh, um, based in the web. Um, the camera system records everything that's happening. Uh, I envision an office with some, you know, 80 inch televisions in it where we can actually see the buses moving around the city. If we have to actually go in and see what's happening in a bus, we'll be able to go in and see what's happening at any location at any time. This is great for us to be able to monitor if, if buses are running late, we can see why, we can see what's happening. Um, again, uh, uh, as we move forward with the apps, parents can see on their cell phones where buses are. Um, quite often we get calls saying the bus you know, left early and didn't pick up my child. And the truth is the bus didn't leave early. We have all that data. We have all that information. We know where they are. You know, none of our buses, unless they're on a field trip, are going to be leaving the city. So again, our map is Brockton. We can see it. There's GPS on every bus. There's DVRs, like I said, that record everything. Um, along with these cameras, you'll see there's 133, even those 127 buses, because we want extras, because we never want a bus going out with a camera that's down. If it's down, we're going to swap it out. We made sure that it's something that, you know, one of our techs can go in, pop it out, pop a new one in, and out it goes. So we never have a situation where, oh, there was an accident with the bus and uh, the camera wasn't working. We want to make sure we're on top of that. So we ordered, or we're going to be ordering extra for that. Uh, again, the cloud service will pay every year, has just a renewable fee of 25,900. That's our the storage of our data, um, all the videos and our ability to um, see um, what's happening live in all of our buses. So GPS and video, and later on you'll see there's another piece that we're looking at that before any bus leaves the yard, there's a handheld device that you walk around the bus and you actually have to pretty much touch it to little contact points that means you were there, you inspected the bus. You saw that everything is in order before you leave the yard, which is, is a, a, a great piece to have in place. Um, that, that, that feature also, Aldo, is that we'll use it before the bus leaves the yard in the morning for their route um, or, or when it returns in the afternoon and they it will put a you know, zonar, it's called zonar, we'll put a, one of the nodes in the back of the bus so the driver has to walk all the way to the back of the bus and check every seat and then touch that zonar that, that, that they, they've been there because they make sure the bus is empty at the end of the day. Right, exactly. It's a great point. Yeah, because that, that's one thing we don't want to have a story on is a child left asleep on a bus. So um, there used to be that you'd see the little sign they'd hang in the back of the window. This is better. It's all electronic and it all gets recorded onto our computer system. So we'll know. And, we have, and we have the live camera view as well to see if they went you know, inspected the bus. So. Exactly. Um, so this is just the explanation of the GPS camera system. Um, this is some of the pictures. So here's one of the views, one of the cameras. Um, you'll see it's pretty clear, even uh, though you're looking on the computer. Um, that's just one of the cameras picks up the driver and the, the students up front. There's another camera. You'll see it's wide angle. It picks up all the other seats. And the camera, I'm not sure if we'll show it in the next one, another angle, again, getting the bus from many angles. But um, the camera has the ability to zoom in. So if there's a situation again going on, you've got the ability to zoom in with that camera and see what's happening. Real, real time as, as the bus is en route. <laughs> exactly. And then it has a stop cam, they call it. This is the one that'll actually record a license plate if someone decides to pass the school bus and just blow by the stop sign. Um, we're, not, we're, not, we're not in the business of stopping them, but we do have school police that if you have a situation like this, you call school police. If they're you know, able to, they can grab the driver. And uh, hopefully the reputation will be you know, in the city is do not pass a school bus. Um, so this is where some of the cameras, you can see that the child in the seat here, you're able to zoom in, you can almost see what's on her cell phone. Um, so again, depending on what's happening in the bus, if kids are doing anything with illegal drugs or whatnot, you know, you'll be able to see what's happening. So um, again, a great feature for us to have back in the office. Um, this is the device that's in the bus that um, 
maintains all the data. And two-way radios again, and all the buses, uh, a main unit at, at the facility or the warehouse we're gonna work out of. So we have our constant communications with, with every vehicle. Um, again, everything brand new. That's we want to make sure that we go into this business and have no hiccups the first the first year. So with everything brand new and extras in place, we feel we'll be in great shape. Um, this is a, again this proposal came from the bus company. Title and registration costs we actually don't pay for that because we're a city, so it's not a concern of ours. Um, this is just going through the total acquisition costs if we finance it and. Um, the proposal we're going to bring forward um, at the finance meeting is to actually, and speaking with the mayor or the CFO, being able to buy half of this fleet cash because we should have a surplus this year. And then we can discuss the second half of the fleet, whether we finance that or whether we wait another year. Um, that's still open for a discussion. So we're, we're talking all together around 11 million two buys all the buses, the radios, the cameras, um, everything we need. Um, Again, the title cost is, is not a cost we have to pay. So um, it's actually not bad. Last year we spent about 13 million on buses and vans and some private um, companies. And uh, $11 million right now is, is uh, you know, will pretty much be where we are plus saving a couple million if we did that. Maintenance costs, you know, the buses are brand new. We're looking at just changing the oil the first few years some brake pads, you know, uh, we have a mechanic on staff. There's not gonna be a lot we have to really do um, until they start putting some miles on. And like I said, we're estimating less than 5,000 miles a year per bus. We will have some that do field trips and whatnot. So those might have a little more, but they're gasoline engines. So you're talking, you know, your, your brakes, you're talking, um, you know, tires. Is it's, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's all minor stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Maintenance is, is, is great. Maybe in year four or five or six, you start doing something a little more. Fuel cost, we estimated it um, at around, again, 5,000 miles a year on each bus. The buses get six miles a gallon on average. Um, they're not like a Toyota or a Honda. But we also don't pay um, tax on gasoline. So when we get our gas from Municipal Depot, we get it at the cost uh, less all the taxes the state pays. So we average the cost of two twenty five a gallon in here for the gas. Right now, I think it's a little bit less than that to the to the city, but we're being just a little conservative um, on that. So about um, one hundred thirty eight thousand a year to gas the whole fleet, and I think again that's a conservative number. I think it'll be less than that. So again, this is just financing if we cost out the buses. This is, again, if we were going to go and, and uh, lease them or get uh, financing from a third party. And right now we're not looking at that. So the production and delivery time is the, the tough, the part that Jim and I are trying to meet right now. Mm -hmm. So in order to get these buses made, as you can imagine, COVID has slowed down, you know, the manufacturers a little bit, but if we order, Literally um, next week, we should have what we need, a good amount of the buses um, in the summertime, maybe July or August, which would be great to have them a little bit early, get them ready for September. Um, maybe even use some of them for some of our summer classes that we offer. Uh, the sooner we get the order in, the sooner they get what they call the chassis and the engines, and then they build out the buses from there. So um, we're, we're hoping you know, between this meeting and the finance committee meeting, uh, we'll be asking to you know, take unused money from this year and appropriate it um, within the school department from operations and maintenance to capital. And the capital allow us to go buy the, the vehicles, we'll produce a, a purchase order and give it to the bus manufacturer who again is on state contract and they'll get everything ordered and start preparing our buses for us. Um, put us in a, a good position, to, um, especially since the, the prices have been going up so high every year on this. and. We're hoping that we're back to school full time September 1st. And if so, everything would be um, up and used. And the, the biggest obstacle we'll have at that point is between now and the end of summer is hiring drivers. They're called 7D is the license they need. And um, they're all Teamsters. They work for Teamsters Union. So we would bring them in as Teamsters. We'd pay them competitive uh, rate. And the benefit they have with us is they get the city health insurance, they get the city pension. 
So those, those are big factors in bringing in um, some of these drivers. And if, you know, if for a student is going to be doing all our busing, the drivers are there. I assume that we'll be picking up their drivers. You know, it won't be as if we're trying to bring in brand, brand new people, but we'll be in a great position. I think you'll find people that will want the benefits coming to work for us. Um, that's just the invoices. Um, that was their proposal from from Bluebird. Um, how do I? Can everybody see that? Yeah, it was, it's still this presentation is still up. Yeah. Oh, it is. All right, stop share. There you go. Let me do this again. Very good. There we go. Can you see that now with the spreadsheet? Yep. Yep. So the shaded area is all the buses, and we 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 pared down the number of buses from the original proposal of buying all the buses at once. Um, we said for now we're looking at six of the large buses that way we can do field trips and sporting activities. 43 of the regular small buses, 12 with the child restraint, seven with the handicapped, and two of the ones that handle the slightly larger kids. So that's roughly half the buses. And in total, that's that's 5.1 million. And right now I can comfortably say we have 5.1 million that we haven't used this year that we can, you know, the finance committee can look at appropriating that money to place an order and buy those buses and, and, and get them underway. On top of that, there's about another million one that we need to totally set up the operation. And again, I think from what I'm seeing happening here with, with students going back remote, uh, we're going back 25% capacity. I don't think that we're gonna use the rest of our bus money for the rest of the year. So I think the rest of what we need can also be paid for out of cash. We don't have to decide that right now because um, that's items that won't take us that long to get. So we can discuss that another month from now once we see um, how back to school goes. Um, but I, I, we, the city originally gave us 11 million, I think three or 11 million seven to start the year with. And then we have uh, about a million of circuit breaker money we put in there. And then we have some school money we put in there to pay field trips. So we've, we've got other funds that we can shift to um, without having to borrow to get what we need. And just going quickly through the list, I've got the spare tires, um, which we want on hand, we have a vendor, someone like a Lynch, that if we ever had a bus go down, mm -hmm. we'd have a brand new tire. They'd go on rim, they'd go right out, take the one off, put the new one on. Hopefully within an hour or so, get the bus back on the road and going. So we decided to put about half a dozen of those um, in the bid. And again, you know, bus tires, they very seldom go flat. So that's something we have as emergency. We got our video system, our two-way radio system, you know, base radio, warehouse, base. P.S. I have in here two F Ford F-150 service trucks. One will be for a supervisor who's out checking and one will be for someone doing some service. If something happens to a bus, someone needs to get out there, bring something. We'd have two, again, two trucks available. Um, one is a supervisor, one's kind of a maintenance man that runs out. Um, I put in for some, you know, some cones and traffic barriers for the yard because we'll have to have our buses in a certain order in the yard. Um, depending on if we get a warehouse or where we set up, I budgeted some money to set up an office to get it up and running, some warehouse shelving because our, our seats come out of these van, out of the buses and equipment comes out. We have places to put them, to store them, a security system, a bus yard PA system, tools for the mechanic um, to get started with, um, some um, maintenance equipment for the, for the shop, again, to get it up and running for, you, you need slightly different equipment for buses than you do the trucks. So, uh, bringing internet and fiber into the building to run our system and connect to our city network. Um, there's these pieces of equipment that Jim found that's pretty cool. It actually removes the snow from the roof of a bus. You kind of drive underneath it. It looks like a big kind of like forklift. And as you drive underneath it, it has a brush on the top. You adjust the height. You drive under it and it pushes all the snow off the roof. And then with one of the F-150s and a plow blade, you push it out of the way. So it's a quick way to, after a major snowstorm, to get the buses out without having to get someone on a ladder up there to clean it. Two of them, they're $35,000 each, but they look like they're worth every single penny. Your buses will ride right out of the yard with no snow on the roofs. 
uh, which as we know is illegal in the state to have snow on your roof. And then that Zonar handheld bus inspection that Dr. Cobbs was talking about, the best safety item because you'll never have a child left on a bus. You never have a bus leaving the yard with a slightly flat tire or a broken tail light. Everything has to be inspected before they leave. And then I just threw in $100,000 for other, just in case there's something we missed. All of that is about a million one. Um, and that gets us completely up and running. That's a whole system um, in place. So aside from that one time cost, the operational costs would be, um, if, if we did buy the rest of the buses, a bond to pay the buses, but again, we'll, uh, we can leave out. But we have a warehouse you know, that will have a lease um, that we'll pay every year on a, on a facility. We will park our buses and run not only the, the busing um, system out of it, but we'll put the entire warehouse right now. We have operations, so pretty much all operations. Yeah, Jim would have the whole thing set up. Um, the gas, fuel, electricity run the building, water, sewer, some maintenance on the buses. Again, I said like oil changes, the office phones, uh, maintenance for the radios and the camera systems, the annual renewals of them, uh, alarm system for the building, road service contract, like I said, or someone like a Lynch who will be available to us at any time to go after our buses, and then insurance for all the buses. Um, so operationally, we've gone through and we figured we got everything covered there. Personnel, same thing. We've figured out an office, an administrative assistant, a transportation supervisor, which we have. Um, well, transportation supervisor would be one of those um, gentlemen we talked about driving a truck, a dispatch manager, a routing supervisor we have. That's Peggy Kalea. She already does that. She looks at all the students every year and she plans out all the bus routes, make sure that there's not 85 kids on a bus stop with a bus that holds 72 kids. She plans out the routes so that um, the buses are always um, never at past full capacity, but are being utilized to the best. Factored in a cost of $26 an hour for the bus drivers. Right now they make about 31 with for a student. Um, in, in talking with um, one of the consultants, uh, we can probably do a little less because we're offering full health insurance and full benefits. But even if we pay the same rate they're paying, we still will save a million dollars a year um, from what we're paying to first student. I'm trying to save more like two, two and a half million a year. Um, annual training and testing of drivers. You know, there, there are drivers. We're going to be constantly checking them and testing them. There'll be um, uh, drug testing that we'll require. Um, workers' comp, other costs. Mechanic, we already have one on staff. At some point, we might need a second one, but we can start off fine. The custodian, and then all the benefits um, for, the, for the drivers and the office staff. And then again, I threw a number for just for unknown at 75000 so we're looking at about, with all of that, about 5.8 million um, to run the system. So right now, like I said the city's giving us about 11.3 every year. If we can do this and buy these buses, we're looking at about 5.8. So right away we save some money coming out of the gate. Again, we're paying the buses cash. That's huge, um, but we, you know, we save a decent amount of money. So and if, even if even if we weren't, even if we financed the buses, I figured out it would, we'd save a million one a year, even paying off the financing of the buses. Um, first student, I'm anticipating at least a 10% increase. Other towns have paid a lot more. So I factored in us having about 65, 64, 65 buses and first student will still be providing about another 57 buses for all our routes. So um, that would reduce our savings slightly um, but would still be a savings over what we have with them. So like I said, once we decide what to do after the first half of the buses, if we decide um, that we're gonna buy the rest or if the city decides they wanna borrow the other 5 million to buy them, then that'll just add to our savings. But either way, we control what's happening with the buses. Um, I think Dr. Cobbs is, is in favor of uh, us having this control over this. Because right now, if you wanna, Dr. Cobbs, you have to deal every day with with everything, correct? Yeah, so like Aldo said, thanks Aldo for the great uh, update on the uh, on the cost. Um, so again, Aldo and I, you know, we, we, we're still, you know, there's a big concern is still engaging for a student and, and having to use them again next year. So we're obviously in favor of, you know, purchasing all the buses um, sooner than later. And, and 
you know, one of the ways we could do that is like Aldo just presented, you know, we can spend the, the $5.1 million now cash and, and place the order in, you know, for, for, to get the busted in production. And then at the end of the fiscal year in, in July, place the next order, you know, off of the next year's uh, capital budget. So we can get those ordered early in July. So, and so we'll have those sooner than later in the school year. So, you know, we may not need to go out to first student to bid. And we, you know, we may have smaller, just routes, individual routes that we can bid out to other, other providers and not have to worry about the huge increase for, you know, over the uh, first student contract. Um, so, I, you know, again, we recommend strongly that, you know, obviously we, we like to see just, you know, place the order and get, the, get all the buses in, in, in sooner than later. But, you know, again, another way to phase it in is, you know, purchase, you know, the cash purchase now and then in July, you know, put the next five million in uh, capital spending to purchase the buses. Um, so that will get the, the buses in production now, you know, you know, the, the, um, the actually the Bluebird bus company is willing to work with us and, and, and we'll, we'll actually take delivery of buses before they expect it in, in, in the first payment. You know, so, so that, you know, we need, don't need to finance it or, or do any of the, or bond it out you know, if, we, if we go that route. So our ask is to, you know, obviously we I think we're pretty much everybody decided this is the right thing to do and the way to go, but how we're going to go about it is, is the way we need to decide as a, as a cool committee. And uh, again, our recommendation is to, you know, buy them all sooner than later, but you can, again, we can buy you know, 5 million now and then in July, you know, place the rest of the order and, and, and uh, move forward. So. Dr. Cox, can I get one comment in there? Sure. This was something you said, Aldo, about the all the drivers need a 7D license. Yes. Which is, is not true on this. They need a school bus license on this. If you go over 16 passages, you got to have a school bus license, okay. not a 7D. Okay. You're right. You're right. I'm thinking of the, we were talking yeah, about the, the small ones. And the, the small. other thing, I right. don't, I'm not even sure you know or uh, Dr. Cobbs, but I drove a school bus myself part time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different towns and cities have different rules and regulations. Uh, this is, and if you do it now, it's a lot cheaper. Sure. A couple of different regulations. We had to have a standard transmission. Mm -hmm. That was in uh, Canton. Easton required air conditioning in the bus. Hmm. No surprise. Uh, no surprise there. <laughs> Stoughton required AMF and radio wow. on their bus as well. Interesting. You know, these are, the reason I'm bringing it up, because if you retrofit it after the bus is made, it costs a, like three times more. Absolutely. Than now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, why that's standard cool. transmission? It's just something to think about. Yeah. Why do they want a standard transmission? Some of the drivers like standard transmissions, although yeah. they, oh. you know, they have more control of the, the bus itself. You know, you can downshift it. Wow. That used to be part of the driving test. You had to stop the bus by using the transmission. Huh. Oh, oh boy. Yes. When I first started. I can hear them grinding now and talk about maintenance costs. You know, that, I'm sure that's, that's uh, going to increase the maintenance cost with the standard trans transmission. Uh, yeah. Aldo, I need to add something. Um, there's no way uh, one mechanic who's on staff now can service. He's, we have enough problems fixing the police cruises, the, mm -hmm. our own facilities, trucks. Um, and then, I mean, I know we're buying buses brand new, but you know, if you, you know, even if you buy 64 or whatever the number is here, you're always going to get a couple lemons. I mean, there's no, yeah. you're going to have, I mean, just because they're brand new, doesn't mean you're never going to have a problem with them there. Well, they get curbs, they break down, they have this, they have that. I mean, this, right. I've worked with first students for years. There's always something that happens with buses. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. You know, I would recommend that you're going to have to add, you know, I would say you'd need, you know, I'd keep the current mechanic would stay on what he's doing now because he has enough trouble keeping up with the work. But you'd need to hire two mechanics to, mm -hmm. to have an operation like this, even if you, only, yeah. if you only buy half the buses. There's, there's no possible way that we could do this okay. with one right. mechanic on staff. So sure. I factored in some money there that isn't spent yet that we can... You know, there's already seventy-five thousand extra, and if we add another fifty thousand, um, we still got plenty of savings in the overall. No, I hear you. I mean, but I, and also, I, you know, you know, we put, and I just want to be clear. So, 
because the Teamsters are a part of the Brockton Public Schools now. So we have a we have a base number here as an hourly wage, but I want to be clear to everybody, that's this has to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever the, the drive is, a, a new contract with the drivers would have to be negotiated. So, right. uh, you know, we could, we have that down as a, you know, as a estimate, well, we be, we're on a, as an estimate, but let's mm -hmm. be clear that their hourly wage and, and whatever routes are in, you know, there's other things that are in contracts, just more than just money. So yep. we have to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, you have, you know, you see other con there's longevity, not that you're going to have longevity when you're just starting, but, those are things that, you know, there are other things in contracts that mm -hmm. you have to take into consideration. And that $26 an hour, again, that's a, that's a starting point. Uh, but we st all, it still all has to be negotiated with the Teamsters. Yep. Yep. Mr. Sullivan, I had a couple of questions. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Aldo, for the presentation and Dr. Cobbs. Um, I want to go back to probably about five years ago. So this is, we, we were talking about this and it's wonderful that we're seeing this come together a lot sooner than we ever expected, um, given all the budget cuts we've had over the years. So quick question, um, what type of, I saw the two year warranty, but is that the warranty on the equipment or is that the warranty on the actual vehicles? Do the buses come with a, a standard warranty? Like a vehicle would come with a warranty? And if so, what is that? Yes, yes, they do. They're, they're, they're different warranties for different parts of the vehicles, like the drivetrain and the, and the chassis. So they're, they're different warranties. And, and we actually, I think we built in extended warranties in, into our, our pricing. So, but they do actually come with warranties, yes. Okay. And then for those that are watching that haven't really followed, um, you know, the talks that we've had over the years as far as trying to purchase our own busing, uh, you know, we're looking at... Mr. Petronio, as far as what we currently pay, is it 13 million to lease the buses, correct? Not even leasing, which is that's just a contractual, uh, sorry, Aldo, go ahead, Aldo. <laughs> right. That's a yearly contract that we pay. Right, yes, correct. Whereas to purchase, it's 11.7. So a lot of people are thinking, oh, you know, we're talking about a large number, but for 11.7, we would own our own buses and not correct. have to worry about that 13 13 some odd million is a yearly payment that we make every single year for the busing. And we have for many years. Um, and it seems like the pricing keeps going up. So this is the only way for us to go to be able to start saving some money to be able to focus on other areas that, mm -hmm. that, you know, now we got the busing, we can right. focus on other areas that we need to, um, you know, everything from it to teachers to new schools, Little by little, this is going to give us a little bit of a boost as far as saving some of the funds that we've been, we've had no choice over the years other than to spend this money. Um, It'll keep our that's, that's, that's correct. Yeah, it just just so everyone knows, we spend over thirteen million a year in busing that we do not even own, whereas eleven seven, say twelve million, we would own these outright. And it's, it's an investment. Well, so, keep, keep mind, 13 million includes about a million or more that we use mm -hmm. um, of small vans that take kids, you know, out of mm -hmm. the city. some of the Kenny Vento homeless busing. Right. And you see all the little bus services we have. Oh, well, includes all of that. So, the okay. larger that's what I was going to ask you is um, do we have a ballpark idea of what we're spending a I'm year um, on, um, on that? that? You know what? I'm thinking that maybe I am on this one. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Tom, your mic is open. <laughs> oh, I guess I am. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. Hey, Jim, so, I'm sorry about that. Hey, am I on the subcommittee? No. I don't think so. Who's no, you're not on some. Oh, it's Timmy, it's Joyce, and who's the third? Tony. 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 Okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll be off. I, I, I wasn't sure if I was on this one. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm just listening in. Very good meeting, though. Um. So, Aldo, back to, so do we have a ballpark range of what we're spending on the private um, buses? Yes, on the large buses and the medium-sized buses, it's around 11 million just for those, little, maybe 11 and a half million. And then the other million and a half or more is on all of the little private services, um, which we won't need as much anymore because we'll have buses that can do those routes. 
Okay, that's that was um, that was where my question was heading. Is as far as the private services, so that's probably a little over a million a year that we're spending. So, yes. I mean, this is this is definitely um, a long time coming, and I'm happy to see that we're finally got we finally got to this point as far as purchasing buses. So, you want know, um, Miss Miss Azak, you know, one of the things with the private contract is I, I would just had a meeting with you know the principals. We're we're planning on bringing the students back, and and they express their concerns about you know the constant you know issues that they, between the parents and and the and the private services, and and um, we have no control over them. Not not even like we do with first student. You know, we, first student we can call a dispatcher and say, hey, this is it. So what's going on? With the private bus and the contractor, you know, they, we have no no control whatsoever on those. So, we'll bring that back in house and have that under our control. No, so let, let's back up for a second. So, parents have the so the private we do we do pay um, smaller companies to do outside placement runs. We have them do other runs mm -hmm. um, in the district. Um, so, I think that's what you're talking about, right, Joyce? Correct. That's what I was talking about. So, you know, so some of those will still have to be used because not all this will service those. Because right. uh, um, I used to, again, I signed all these invoices for years. So mm. there are several private. So what Jim's talking about is parents hire their own private transportation. And those are the private mm -hmm. transportation companies that, um, you know, cause the principal's fits because they don't pick up the, the students on time. They drop them off late. Sometimes they're an hour late. Sometimes they, they sometimes they're not safe. Um, uh, school police has to do um, 7D checks often. Um, those we can't control. And those, you know, these buses that we're buying, we wouldn't be able to obviously charge parents to, to use. So those private companies, the parents use, it's because obviously, you know, they have to work and they have to have a, you know, bring their child to school and are eligible to take the bus. That's, that's, you know, we put out, um, mm -hmm. we put out a memo just asking parents if you're hiring a private company, these are the things you need to look for. Mm -hmm. um, Tobias did that for us a few years ago. It just tells them, you know, what, you know, make sure the driver has the proper license, make sure the, the vans have the proper equipment, you know, that buying these buses is that is not going to make that go away. That's an issue that's going to stay with us. And mm -hmm. again, we, we work closely with school police to make sure those vans and buses are, are safe. Mm -hmm. But and we give parents tips of when they're looking for those companies, you know, what to look for when they're hiring them. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Any questions, Tony? Tony, you still there? Yeah, you had a log on my phone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I keep getting booted off on my uh, laptop here. Oh, the only thing I was, uh, I, if uh, on the lettering on the buses, is that something that's going to, are we getting this delivered just, you know, just painted and we are, we're, we're uh, how can I say, we're responsible for, you know, implementing the letters on the buses with the, with the city name, you know, Brock School Department or yes, that's something that the company automatically does when you're purchasing the buses. We'll, we'll take them delivered with without your letter that as we require them to be allowed to tell. So. Okay. Just want to make sure that's like an added cost because I didn't hear that mentioned. No. Oh. Anything else, Tony? No, that's, that's good. Most of the questions were answered that I was going to ask anyway. So, Dr. Cobb, I just, I just have one question on the spare tires. Sure. Uh, well, it says six of each size. For each 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 bus for each size bus, not for each for each, so yeah, so we'll have six for each each large bus and six for the smaller for so every every particular size that we need for particular buses, we'll have six spares for. I, I'm not even sure if you know if each bus is going to have six tires on it. Yeah, well, hopefully we don't have to. You know, we don't need every you know that many at a time. So you know, we'll we'll buy six if we need to buy one more. We'll buy more, but you know, we'll we'll have six. We'll get them repaired or replaced, and then they'll, they'll be on the rim ready to go for you know for a short turnaround time. Okay, just letting you know. Yeah, I know they're, they're tandem wheels and there's six on each bus already, but hopefully not all. You know, one at a time, so. <laughs> or or two if they're tandem. You know. <laughs> Any other questions, Joyce? Sorry, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. This is good. Um, is it possible to get a copy of this sent to us? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank yep. you. Aldo, what do you need from this subcommittee? Um, a recommendation to move forward? Or? Just Yeah, just to move forward, because we'll bring it up in the Finance Committee next to discuss um, shifting the funds um, to make the purchase. So I guess the question that we're looking for is how, you know, the school committee wants to move forward, you know, to purchase, you know, five, you know, $5 million worth now and then later or how, the, how they'll be structured. And that's maybe something the finance committee will sort out, you know, as well. But, uh, so. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I just, I want to, uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Cobbs and, uh, and Aldo uh, and Mike and Troy Clarkson on the city side. We've been talking about this uh, when I took office in early January of, of 20 before COVID came to Brockton. And I know we, uh, we briefly talked about it before the city council, Troy and I, and I know we've mentioned it in passing before the school committee. So from a sheer financial standpoint, this truly makes sense without question, right? It makes common sense and business sense. We'll be able to control our own destiny. Um, you know, the only, I guess the only caveat is, do we want to buy, you know, full freight hundred percent? Um, or do we want to buy the 5.1, which we already have cash on hand? So it's something we're still considering. Um, but I do know at the end of the day, um, you know, you don't have to, uh, be a wizard in math to understand that if we're spending 13 and we can spend 11, uh, it makes sense, even with the carrying cost of employees and insurance and the like. So I just want to thank again, everybody that's been working diligently on this including the, the three members of this subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Eldo. Yes. In the beginning of this meeting, I, sh I should have taken a roll call to create a quorum. Oh. I just, I forgot to do it. I'm just going through the sheets and I got it right here. Okay. So I, can I quickly create a quorum? Just, if, you just give me a hair. Uh, I got the mayor, Bob Sullivan. Yes, but I'm not a voting member, so I'm here. Here, but not voting. Mark D'Agostino. Not here. Joyce Azak. Present. Cynthia Rivas Mendez. Tom Minicello. Tony Rodriguez. Here. Judy Sullivan, Tim Sullivan is here. We do have a quorum, 100%. So now you need a vote on this now, Aldo? I would say just a vote saying that you approve of the, of the, um, approve of the presentation and the idea of buying the buses because then the, the finance committee meeting would have to decide if they want to approve the funds. So they'd make a motion to recommend favorably to the finance subcommittee. Right. Yes. Right. Um, I'll make a motion to recommend favorably to the full committee. Second. A motion has been made by Tony Rodriguez to recommend favorably moving forward with buying the buses. That motion was seconded by Joyce Azak. Any questions on the motion? We need a roll call on that motion. The mayor, I know you're non-voting. Mark D'Agostino, non-voting. Joyce Azak? Yes. Cynthia Rivas Mendez, non-voting. Tom Minicello? Present. Okay. Tony Rodriguez? Yes. Judy Sullivan, non-voting. Tim Sullivan, yes. And that motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Any other business on the buses and vans? No, thank you. Item two, Joyce, don't go yet. We gotta do a roll call <laughs> to get out. <laughs> Item two, other business? Any other business? We need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And a second. Second. A motion has been made to adjourn by Joyce Azak, seconded by Tony Rodriguez. Any questions on the motion? 
Hearing none. By roll call, Mayor Bob Robert F. Sullivan, non-voting. Mark D'Agostino, Vice Chair, also non-voting. Joyce Azak, voting. Yes. Cynthia Rivas Mendez, non-voting. Tom Minicello, non-voting. Tony Rodriguez. Yes. Judy Sullivan, non-voting. Tim Sullivan, yes. Meeting adjourned, unanimous.